filmmaking is not just about oh this is the story i want to tell there's a lot of jugad you have to make things happen how am i going to get the money how am i going to get back cuz how am i going to pitch this there this like so you can't be like i'm not interested in this part of it you know you have to figure out how are you going to set up your projects who's going to fund it who's the greatest filmmakers are there because they figured out a way to get funding and to get their films out if the script is engaging then you know the politics of it i mean you find people aligned to the film's politics the storytelling sort of transcends those barriers i i spoke to anubhav sir about it about the whole marketing and i was very nervous about it i was like are ye to matlab it, it shouldn't feel like one social campaign no it's at the end of the day a movie so he was very convinced about it he was like you know see mummy for this particular movie this is how i want to go about it because i really believe that the message is bigger a moral pursuit cannot uh, guarantee you commercial gain or i feel it's difficult to do so um in my own thing i think i've always attached to producers who are fairly inclusive in their own thought process you know for me it's very difficult to go to a producer who's just saying that you know take jo karna kar le um no but i want you to believe in me because it is not just my vision it's also your vision as a producer who's funding it the people who backed the film uh, also backed uh, this film called the accidental prime minister okay so these are people whose politics were actually completely opposite of uh, mm. shahid azmi's or my own politics okay and it was lesson in coexistence what did i do to sell it they heard the story the story resonated they heard it as a film not as a political statement so you know this is something i always tell people that first find that story uh, think like a filmmaker before you think like mm. an activist so from 2004 dhanush had put me on to around like some teen producers out of which seven producers paid me an advance and i was i used to sit in an office discuss for two months and they will say okay this guy is going to spend more money i am not i don't want to invest in him so i will be on the streets again after that five producers like within us over a period of one and a half years kept changing like they'll pay the advance then they'll shoot for, like uh, they'll do a photo shoot and then this guy spent more money and he's arrogant we don't want him then again back to square one then when visarane happened visarane i was able to achieve because of keeping the budget under control and having uh, having people who were ready to give up on on uh, whatever comforts that they were able to make through being part of a film so that this film could be made and a producer who just went by whatever that i said and and he just wanted to make sure that i made a film there was a lot of despair the film took 11 months uh, to make uh, mm. you know, we would shoot for 3 days raise money then do the next schedule so we would raise 3 lakhs 2 lakhs so it was it was made that way the final schedule was made with my father in law's money so he saw me very low and you know uh, so he said i have a fixed deposit of 12 lakhs you can take it so he gave me that he broke his fd gave me that money and i finished film you know and then i had still i had 3 days left and i borrowed money from somebody at 7% per month to finish the last 3 days uh, you know, i myself get inspired by her is reema das you know she is someone and i think i tell everybody that today you don't have an excuse for not making a film look at her you know she came to bombay to be an actor Okay, she recently told me, "Only you didn't give me a role. I had approached you. I said, 'Good, you became a director.' <laughs> you know, so she ten years tried doing all that, and then realized that maybe her calling is making films. And she trained herself to watch world cinema because she was clear that that's how she can. You know, so it's very important to know yourself, know what is it that is your strength." you need to know your desire what you really want accept them be as honest to yourself as possible and then today you can make a film with a five i mean she shot the film directed the film edited the film you know it was a five member team 
which made village rock star which was india's entry to uh, oscars you know after that she made this film another film which also she did everything called bulbul can sing which was at cannes which was at berlin which was everywhere how do you find people aligned to the film's politics two things the story just even today is very very proud of the film you know the producer keeps its it's got pride of place in his office everything so he's he's proud of the film and his politics are completely opposite so it was also you know uh, it showed you that you know storytelling sort of transcends those barriers you know the system now is very very uh, different when we all started working it was a very more traditional system where you assisted a filmmaker for many years and then that filmmaker you know somehow helped you to make your own films which is how it happened with me i assisted mr prakash jha for many many years um i worked with him you know as an associate director also as an executive producer for films he was producing and you know and then he kind of produced my first two films so uh and that was a lot of how things were happening when we had actually started working and now of course it's not like that because there are many more avenues you don't need to assist for so many years and uh, you know everyone's much more open so uh i don't think there's any like way of doing it is is you know except like just being at it you write your film or whether you are you know directing it you somebody else has written it whatever you have to just go pitch it you pitch it to studios to production houses you know to the streamers um and you just be at it i think now there's like a really great space for short films so having a you know if you made a short film then uh, it's a really good way of pitching you know, if it's your first feature you know then you can be like okay i've done this short i mean you also must be aware of the kind of industry we come from unless you have a big star or unless it's perceived as populist no one wants to uh, finance them when i at one point got so frustrated i said i don't care i'll just try and do it through crowdfunding i didn't know if it would happen i didn't know that so many people would trust me and you know we raised nearly over a crore you know and that's till now i think the largest uh, a crowd source a uh, crowd funded film in india you know properly through social media i felt the empowering process started there from the first email that i received which was from a student in pune and he told me that i'm sending you 2000 rupees i don't want you to use my name because i can't be open about the fact that i was sexually abused just credit d for me you are telling my story and this will empower me in india the problem is there's no proper funding for independent cinema so eventually you have to go to the same studios to help you release the film you're going to the same people for funding unlike you know america still has like some you know independent funding and europe has a proper system where there is uh, the government funds and all of that so india earlier there at least there was nfdc and all and now that has also really petered out it's not really there so there is no systematic way of you know getting uh, like getting those films made the ecosystem is different uh, you know in india and now even independent films like they because you have to compete in the same place so then it becomes like you know newton also has to compete with the uh, uh, bagi so it's complicated so i think um, there i mean i feel there should be more institutional support for smaller independent films which are more free thinking you know i believe filmmakers should stay away from marketing we should not be attempting to make trailers because we make works of art we should not be making posters because we want to make paintings you know it's best left to the experts you can respond to it if it completely misrepresents your film you have every right you should reserve the right to reject it but listen to people who have experience uh, on these uh, things for me uh, a promo of the movie is something that needs to be engaging now how you choose to be engaging are you going to engage me through the entertainment portion are you going to engage me through the argument that you are making you know that's important
it happens so many times to a lot of films where the trailer seems to promise something which the film is not and uh, in so many cases this sort of backfires uh, uh, having said that i also cannot contest the uh, the producer's prerogative to market a film to a certain audience because at some point you kind of give up because uh, it ultimately is a business model which which intends on profiteering we shouldn't be uh, forced to make a choice in the marketing of what to strike with you know the whether we should strike with the message or whether we should strike with what we have i think people respond to something that they immediately engage with you know so even if the message uh, lands on them when they come in the theater i think that will also serve the purpose if they find ki are this is interesting this is relatable i want to go and see it that much is i feel enough i was thinking that if i were nikhil who would i want my story to be told by and i immediately thought of my sister you know and that's why that was actually the reason of calling it my brother nikhil and you know not anything else and because i wanted her to be the though there are other voices she is the primary narrator and through her we get introduced to everyone else and uh, the whole discourse of why not my lover nikhil came in actually much later when we were thinking of marketing and releasing that a lot of people started suggesting that only you know why don't you call it my lover nikhil it will create immediately so much of controversy da 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 da, da. and the, and my reasoning was one i don't want to create controversy i want people to walk into the theater watch the film love nikhil first and then accept him with thappad I suppose it was a very bold move to take it by the horns because a we are not misleading anyone in that case we are not making it about a hero heroine and then saying yeah hey, it's about a social message I have always I have that's one of the things I have been opposed to that hmm. do not load uh, a film with costs of marketing but it has to be smart hmm. it has to be done smartly and I mean you know spend that money on perhaps uh, Uh, you know, prolonging the shelf life of the film at the theaters. Uh, you know, find a way, mm-hmm. pay the exhibitors for an extra week, for extra two weeks. You know, have lesser theaters. You know, spend the money on building word of mouth. It just, you know, it was in the news because of the fact that it had been banned, and of course, uh, I did whatever I could, which is I responded to the media as much as I could, and I didn't respond to a lot. I mean, I could have done a lot more, which I didn't do because I felt some stuff I just didn't want to get into. So you know it, and of course, when we got a Badaji on board to distribute the film, we decided that we, you know, but but by then, like the attention, by the time I actually got the censor certificate, the conversation had already happened. So then we decided that we will do something dramatic to, you know, get people's attention again. Uh, which is why we did like that kind of poster, and we spoke about what had happened and everything. I always feel it's nice if things are story-led and people discover, you know, like what the film is saying, uh, rather than uh, saying, "Okay, go and watch this film because it's going to make you feel empowered." Um, you know, for instance, recently I just saw Gunjan Saxena, and I really liked it, and I didn't feel that it was marketed in in a way where you know it made me feel I'm going to watch this film. I mean, I knew I'm watching a film about you know someone who's a pioneer in her field, but. you know but it was really nice to see and i felt like you get got so much you know like uh, uh, out of it whereas thappad i feel for instance it was very clear what the film was in terms of its messaging and the film delivered it all really depends on various factors okay today when you have an aishman khurana you can take the risk because he as a star has a certain following right even if it was akshay kumar they would have come more people would have come okay not for the article 15 because most people don't know what is article 15 but for the star right secondly i feel that it depends on what story you are telling you know taboos also have different layers right today when you are doing a film which is quote uncoast uh taking up a topic of uh beat acid like you know uh 
what was that chapak or thappar these are not taboos okay these are controversial but not taboos so there is a certain amount of people who are not like absolutely patriarchal whatever who will want to see this films right women will want to see this films so the, you know it will be marketed that okay let's get them whereas when you're doing a film which is dealing with sexuality you know especially be it gay or lesbian okay trans is more accepted you know it's strange but it is in a way more accepted because it's out there as the other you know it's the other story that's why a super deluxe will be a huge success okay because it's not you and me but the minute it's gay or lesbian shit it could be you or me right it makes you feel insecure because there is no like you know unless it's portrayed like in some films you know so that is a taboo watching that is a taboo because it might mean that shit people will think that i'm gay if i go and watch this film and i feel many films like there's a lot of subtle messaging which you don't like i feel gully boy for instance you know considering the times we live in the fact that it was a film about a poor muslim male like poor muslim protagonist and that's the story you're watching so it doesn't matter that the marketing was not about him being but in the kind of uh, uh, divided times we live in and the kind of you know uh, marginalization of um, the minority communities in india i think it's phenomenal that it was you know one of the most popular films um, of last year and it had you know a muslim protagonist so i feel like very often but did they need to market that film like that no they marketed it on him being a hip hop whatever a, 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 you know a, a rapper because you know it's me and sanjay who do everything of the films actually both the films could have had much wider role and impact if we had someone to help us in terms of marketing it taking it to you know schools colleges for you know dialogue uh, but uh, that you know then we had to decide choose between making films and marketing and obviously uh, as a film maker for me making the film is much more attractive you know independent cinema uh, also serves a very important uh, purpose i mean it's in a way its own social impact uh, is that it uh, challenges the mainstream by creating newer narratives by introducing uh, fresh talent you get new talent you get uh, so like rajkumar rao uh, it sort of challenges the mainstream and the mainstream would be what it is without uh, a vibrant independency you know so we have to see its larger impact you know uh, you won't have an abhay deol without the independent films that he did you know all the technicians i mean rajiv ravi all the top cinematographers editors you know they all all of them edit for you know a yashraj or a dharma you know top films top filmmakers shimit amin works with amina nair people worldwide can be influenced by mainstream films you know you can make people support a government blindly by making films that talk about the good things the government is making and you can make the same people question the government in a responsible way by making films about the choice that you make today every festival uh, director is directly reachable to anybody in from india so it is a choice that you have to make if you want to make a film like if you want to do it then you decide the kind of films that you want to make if you want to make it in the mainstream space then try to make something like asuran or article 15 put it in that space or for that matter uh, uh, sairat also talks about an issue but in a mainstream uh, space in a mainstream way it says that so or you want to explore the other side 
then try to do something like uh, visar and i wouldn't term visar nay a proper uh, offbeat film or a parallel film it's a, it's made for mainstream or it was made by a mainstream filmmaker you know i asked anurag you know anurag kashyap made his debut as a writer uh, in my first film jayate so jayate happened just before satya it was so i told anurag i said anurag it's payback time i'm making this film and uh, people tell me that if i have your name on the film uh, i might get money so he said yeah use my name if it helps you so i'm always there and i think we'll make a good, good film this time so i used anurag's name uh, on the film you know having uh, anurag as a sort of guardian angel uh, for the film uh, it helped so anurag uh, showed he took a set of dvds to cameron bailey the uh, artistic director of uh, you know toronto international film festival so cameron saw a lot of films i mean it was not mine was not the only film anurag was like at that time the champion the poster boy everything of independent uh, indian cinema him and gunit you know so they they went with a box of dvds and uh, so among those films uh, one of the films that was selected was shahid mm. so my film got selected there so that selection at toronto sort of became a turning point you know the moment people got to know my peers the industry got to know that you know, i had made a film first of all and i had not really retired and uh, that the film was selected at toronto it just changed things uh, for me and that became like a platform having said that it took after toronto september it was premiered at toronto it took an entire year to find a studio to uh, release it and it took amir khan to do that mm. because uh, we uh, we showed the film to amir Amir Kiran watched the film, uh, and they got Ronnie Stuvala and Zarina to watch the film with them. And uh, I realized that Amir had an agenda. If it was a good film, he would sort of uh, tell Ronnie that maybe this is a film to invest in. Adi is told that one pariyar mess, one arundhati mess, or one pallar mess. And told that I am the pair of which that I am that one kadiya I am that open panamudi manna. இப்போ கவுண்டர் மிஸ்ன்றது வந்து அவங்களோட பிரிவிலேஜ் அது ஒரு மூலதனமா மாறுது அவங்களுக்கு அப்போ அந்த பேர் வந்து அவங்களுக்கு ஒரு பிரச்சனையே இல்லை ஈவன் எல்லாரும் வந்து இப்போ அந்த கவுண்டர் மிஸ்ல வந்து சாப்பிடக்கூடிய அளவுக்கு அந்த ஊர்ல இருக்கிறவங்க எல்லாருமே உள்ள வந்து சாப்பிடுவாங்க அந்த இதுக்குள்ள இப்ப நானும் போய் சாப்பிடலாம் அதுக்குள்ள ஆனா இதே நான் ஒரு வந்து பரையர் மிஸ்ஸோ அருந்த மிஸ்ஸோ இல்ல வந்து பலர் மிஸ்ஸோ வைக்கிறப்போ ஏன் அதுக்குள்ள வருவாங்களா வரமாட்டாங்களா அப்படின்னு கேள்வி கேட்கிறப்போ இங்க ஜாதி வந்து மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு வேலையை செய்யுது அப்போ இந்த கடைக்குள்ள போக கூடாதுன்ற தீர்மானிக்கிறதுக்கு ஜாதி ஒரு முக்கிய தடையா இருக்கு ஆனா இந்த கடைக்குள்ள போலான்றது இல்ல ஜாதி ஜாதி ஒரு பிரச்சனையாவே இல்ல அப்ப ஜாதி ஒரு சமூகத்துக்கு பிரிவிலேஜா இருக்கு ஜாதி ஒரு சமூகத்துக்கு வந்து பிரச்சனையா இருக்கு இப்ப இந்த மாதிரியான அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் குள்ள இருக்கிறப்போ இந் இந்திய சினிமால குறிப்பா தமிழ் சினிமாவில தலித் கதைகள் வந்து வணிக தளத்துல ஏற்றுக்கொள்ளப்படுவதற்கு இந்த மனநிலை மிக முக்கியமானதா நான் வந்து பாக்குறேன் அப்ப வணிக ரீதியா மக்கள் இதை அணுக மாட்டாங்க வணிக ரீதியா மக்கள் இதை ஏற்றுக்கொள்ள மாட்டாங்க வணிக ரீதியா இது வெற்றி அடையாது அப்படின்ற பயம் நான் தலித்துகளுக்கு சுலபமா இருந்தது குறிப்பா அடகதி படத்துல வந்து என்னுடைய ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஓபனிங் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் சீன்ல வந்து அம்பேத்கர் போட்டோ உள்ள வச்சிருந்த நான் வீட்டுக்குள்ள புடிசருடைய ஆள் ஒருத்தர் வந்து என்ன பண்ணாருனா வந்து அம்பேத்கர் போட்டோ வெளியே எடுத்துருங்கன்னு சொன்னாரு ஏங்க அப்படின்னு சொன்னேன் இல்ல இல்ல வெளியே எடுத்தாதான் ஷூட்டிங்கே நடக்கும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டாரு நான் சொன்னேன் என் வீட்டுல அம்பேத்கர் படம் அண்ணா போட்டோ வச்சிருக்கிறேன் கலைஞர் போட்டோ வச்சிருக்கிறேன் எம்ஜிஆர் போட்டோ வச்சிருக்கிறேன் ஏன் அம்பேத்கர் போட்டோ மட்டும் எடுக்க சொல்றீங்கன்னு நான் கேட்டேன் நான் இல்ல டைரக்ட் ப்ரொடியூசர் சொல்லிட்டாரு அம்பேத்கர் போட்டோ எல்லாம் வைக்கக்கூடாதுன்னு சொல்லிட்டாரு வீட்டுக்குள்ள அப்படின்னா ஏன் வைக்கக்கூடாதுன்னு நான் கேட்கிறேன் அவரு வந்து ஒரு இந்திய சட்டத்தை இயற்றியவர் இவ்வளவு பெரிய மக உன்னதமான தலைவர் அவரு ஏங்க நீங்க வந்து இப்ப ஏன் எடுக்கிறீங்க நான் கேள்வி கேட்டதுக்கு அவங்க சொல்றாங்க இல்ல இல்ல மதுரையில ஒத்துக்க மாட்டாங்க அப்புறம் தேட்டரே வந்து பத்தி எரியும் நாங்க உண்மையிலேயே வந்து ஒரு பெரிய ஒரு அது நகைச்சுவைதான் அந்த டைம்ல எனக்கு பெரிய மனசு கஷ்டமா இருந்தது ஆனா நான் வேற வழி இல்லாம நான் வந்து அந்த போட்டோ புகைப்படத்தை எடுத்ததுதான் அந்த படத்தை வந்து நான் வந்து ஷூட் பண்ணேன் ஆனா என்னுடைய மெட்ராஸ்ல நான் கிளைமேக்ஸ்ல அம்பேத்கர் போட்டோட தான் நான் முடிச்சிருப்பேன் காபாலில அம்பேத்கர் டைலாக் நான் யூஸ் பண்ணிருப்பேன் அதுக்கப்புறம் நான் வெளிப்படையாவே ஒர்க் பண்ண ஆரம்பிச்சேன் So it was uh, really a test of my strength I feel like the fact that I could make this film but I think my greatest test was after the film was made you know and I really didn't know what will be the future of this film because we had no distribution we had no money 
and um, you know like i just couldn't there was nothing it was like there was no future because you know every year this every studio i went to i approached they said they loved the film but they were not interested in distributing it um and it was so it was a very hard kind of journey and then of course uh, when we sent uh, when it started you know then we decided to send it for uh, you know for getting the census certificate and then like it got banned so i think it was really a struggle of i think a life and death struggle for me because uh, what happened to me anyway i was on this thing because i was you know it was so difficult to get distribution and I, and the more difficult it was to get distribution the more determined i was i was like i have to get this film out like some other it would just it would have just died in the cans because then it became for me not just about this film but i felt so challenged as a citizen as a a a, a female citizen in india as a, a, you know as a woman in india and i just felt like how can it be that what i want to say somehow is not allowed and what anyone else is saying in all kinds of like this the hypocrisy of it you know like the kind of sexism and the kind of patriarchy that the status quo perpetuates uh it just it's fine no one says anything and now uh, because the moment like there's an alternative point of view i'm being told to shut up i just i think it was me as a filmmaker me as a woman me as a citizen i i think that was the real growing up moment for me and already i was very determined that no matter what I have to, even if I die, I, I literally used to tell myself, even if I die in the process, I'm going to get this film out. You know, a good film uh, has its own journey. It finds its mm-hmm. journey. Uh, you know, so if you look at a film like Kudan, Vikram Mutwani's film, mm-hmm. when it was released, it did. The business was a joke. you know and everybody said oh the film has failed it's flop it resonated it you know becomes one of the best films of the decade yeah you know so it's resonated it found its audience a good film has a shelf life it uh, ensures that the director lives on in the hearts of people and a bad film uh, is uh, one it does not have a shelf life and it destroys the director's credibility so i felt uh, one what i for me what was most important was that i make a credible film you know uh, something that i will be proud of that my family my friends will watch and tell me it's good so you can train yourself you don't need you know of course if you can go to an institute fine but if you can't if you don't have that kind of money you can self train yourself the desire has to drive you and if it drives you you always find ways to do it you know i always tell people that the reason i think i've survived so many years as an independent filmmaker is the drive to make a film and tell my stories is far greater than the hurdles because those hurdles are self chosen no one forced me to make the films kind of films i'm doing i chose so it is my job to find how to overcome them and when you do it it's so fulfilling and ambalatha abindra maru dialogue varum அவரே வந்து அந்த கல்ச்சர் அது இந்த பிரைட வந்து அவராலே வந்து இந்த அவர் அவரால வந்து எரேஸ் பண்ண முடியல அவர் அதை காட்சிப்படுத்த விரும்புறாரு ஆனா அந்த பிரைட காட்சிப்படுத்தன விரும்புற இந்த இடத்துல ஒரு அந்த பிரைட்ல இருந்து ஒரு அப்ரஸ்ட் வந்து இங்க இருக்குது இதனால ஒரு அப்ரஸ்ட் இருக்குது இந்த லைஃப் நம்ம காட்டணும் அதோட உண்மை தன்மை காட்டணும்ன்றதுல வந்து இங்க ஒரு பெரிய ஒரு செட்பேக் தான் இருக்குது அப்படினு நான் நினைச்சி அதுக்கப்புறம் சரி நம்ம இந்த மாதிரியான சினிமாக்குள்ள எடுக்கணும் அப்படின்னு நினைச்சேன் அந்த ஸ்பேஸ் இல்லாததுனால நான் வேற ஒரு மொழியே வந்து கையாண்டேன் இது ஒரு கமர்ஷியலா ஒரு காமன் சினிமாவுக்குள்ள நம்ம இந்த டிஸ்கஷனை எப்படி கிரியேட் பண்ணலாம் அப்படின்னு நான் நினைச்சேன் அப்படிதான் என்னுடைய திரைப்படங்கள் இன்னைக்கு வந்து அட்டக்கத்தில இருந்து அது கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சமா அப்படியே ஸ்ப்ரெட் ஆகி நான் இங்க வந்திருக்கிறேன் அதுக்கப்புறம் நான் நினைச்ச சினிமாக்களை தயாரிக்கிறதுக்கான ஒரு வாய்ப்பு எனக்கு கிடைச்சதுனால பரியரம் பெருமாள் குண்டு மாதிரி அப்புறம் இப்போ சேத்துமான் ஒரு படம் வந்து தயாரிச்சிருக்கிறேன் அப்புறம் குதிரைவால் பண்ணிருக்கேன் குதிரைவால் எல்லாம் கம்ப்ளீட்டா வந்து மேஜிக்கல் ரியலிசம் மூவி அது வந்து நானா முழுக்க முழுக்க தத்துவத்தை வந்து காட்சிப்படுத்துற மூவி இப்ப அவன் எல்லாம் ஆந்திர தாக்கு முயற்சிகளுக்கு <laughs> 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 